in all seriousness, this is not an interesting subject. I know that. However, I am spending <clears throat> most of my working, waking life talking about and helping people move from MT into 2022. And I'm getting the same questions, so I thought it might be useful in 10 minutes <laughs> to answer them all. Uh, no, obviously, I'm not going to be able to do that, but I'm going to give you some pointers, some help. Um, there will be a little bit of a pitch at the end on the product that we provide, but this is meant to be a nice learning session, you know, a late afternoon lunch and learn, shall we say. So ISO 2022 adoption, like it or not, it's coming. Um, by 2025, Swift payments will be on 2022. By 2021, you can coexist sending MT and 2022 payments across. If you're not interested in sending 2022 payments across in 2021, there's a lot of numbers there, um, fine. But you are expected to receive camp messages the other side. That's the kicker. People think, well, I'm not sending. I'm just going to keep sending 101s, 103s. It's fine. The things that get spat out the other end are camp messages. So you've got to be ready and you've got to be prepared. This should be hair on fire time at the moment. So let's have a look at the requirements. Um, this is not just SWIFT. This is going to be quite a few payment initiatives around the world. Canada, Hong Kong, Singapore, blah, blah, blah. Lots and lots. Everyone is pushing towards 2022. And not every requirement is the same. People think 2022 is, oh, it's just a pain in a packs message. But there are different versions as well. Are you working on version 7, version 4, version 3? Am I taking it in XML format? Am I taking it in JSON format? There's a lot of little tweaks. So it's not be all and end all. You are going to have lots of other things to think about when it just comes to 2022. I'm not even going to begin to talk about supplementary data in these, in these messages. But that is another way people are expanding this standard to fit their needs. It's not just payment initiatives as well. It's also customers wishing to use this format. Yeah, payment, in, pay, payment initiators wanting to use this format. It's not just Swift. Everyone is going this way. This is the key element. This is where we come in quite a bit as well. It's protecting legacy systems. You have a treasury system. You have a back office that is only talking Swift MT, or it's only talking CSV, or whatever it is. You will go to that provider, and they will tell you, yep, we can upgrade that for you, and it will cost you this much. I don't want to pay that much, and I've got to get it done next year. So what can I do? Okay, How can I protect these systems? Yes, they're going to be upgraded, but I don't want them upgraded next year or next week. I need it eventually. Can I keep the same systems, keep the same routes, but somehow put a transformation layer in there that can do that transformation on it? OK, so I've only got 10 minutes. So I'm going to click these through, and they're going to be on the board. But these are the most of the questions I get asked. And the standard one is, where are the specs? I've got to go by 2021. How do I know to get from these messages to 2022? The good news is that they're not out yet. They are coming, I think, in December. I believe in December. Swift produced specifications in 2011, but then never updated them. So every year, Swift MT changes. Every year, 2022 changes. You've got different versions. I'm hope no one seems scared, but okay, I, I am, and I'm, I'm the one talking about it. But um, you've got to keep maintaining these standards, okay? So what, a lot of questions I come in saying, well, how do I know what goes from an MT103? What about data truncation? The name and address field is four times 35 characters in Swift. But in 2022, it's lots of different fields. Remittance information, how do I take that huge clob of data and put it into the other one? Honestly, I don't know. I've got to wait, till, like everyone, until December. But I at least have an idea. We already know what the sum specs exist. We should be using them and maintaining them ourselves. And you should be sort of looking at it now. OK. So nice visual diagram, because that's how I work. We have a back office system. We have a treasury system, whatever we have. And that connects to the SWIFT network. And life is good. We get you know annual leave. We get to put our feet up. It's great. Then a new payment initiative comes along, and they want to use the pain message format. Okay, So it's a 101. That's a standard industry, 101 into a pain. How do I get my back office system to go into a pain message if it's only spitting out 101s? Thank God Transformer exists. But anyway, this could be anything, frankly. You could write this in code. You could have another provider do this for you. You can use a Swift service. They, they will do this for you. They are announcing a Swift translation service and letting you do that. Okay, 
I am here to punt transformer, so that's why I'm here. But you create this mapping, or you take our pre-built libraries, you spit out 101s, it gives you back the pain message, and then you move it along its merry way. Again, take another holiday, go on that mega yacht, take some champagne, everything's great. Client A sees that payment initiative, he also is one of your customers, and thinks, that's great, I also want 20022 messaging. Difference here is that, because this is client A, he wants it in a JSON format. It's not XML, it's, they are slightly different, these payloads. People are moving more towards JSON because it's a smaller, it's literally a smaller size of file. If you're using APIs, I'll put my last dollar in my pocket that it's going to be a JSON format you're going to have in there. The great news about this is I can reuse that mapping. I don't have to create a new mapping just because it's JSON and just because it's XML. In Transformer, you have uh, an idea of JSON interoperability, which basically means take its n raw native format, like a Swift message, and give me the JSON schema, or give me the JSON alternative. Finally, client B thinks client A is even onto an even better idea. However, it wants an older format. Now, this is where people actually get, trip up a little bit. They just think it's a pain 001. They like switch off for the um, second decimal point. Is it version two, is it version three, is it version four? They are slightly different. Fortunately in Transformer you've got these very nice expected features so you can actually see if it breaks between version two and version three or backwards compatibility, lots of expected results. So it, it protects you. There's no silver bullet here. You will have to do some work in that mapping. It's not gonna automatically work. You need to work out the logic to do this yourself. But what you want to do, excuse me, is be in control of that change. You don't want to go to your middleware provider and say, I need a mapping from 0 to, I have 0 through, I need 0 to, and then come back to you and say, well, that will take you, let's say, three days, and it will cost you this much. You want to be able to do that yourself. Building mappings is a piece of cake. It's easy. I show people Transformer the GUI, look, it's drag and drop, and the developers will go, yeah, I can do that in J Java in about five minutes. So yeah, of course you can. But then you've got to maintain that every year when the Swift standards change. Then you've got a new standard to take on board. Are oh, you going to Natcha now? Are oh, you using BACS? Yep, that's another mapping. And keep, up, keep, keep, keep updating it. And that's when people come to us because small projects, ring fenced, do one mapping, let it, let it fly. When you start adding bits on and the business analyst who doesn't know Java has a specification who gives it to the developer to build it, who gives it to a tester to give it back, it, it, it takes longer, trust me, I know, it takes longer, okay? So that's why Transformer exists. Um, I haven't got time to go into all of this. I, I, I'm, I'm not here to scaremonger, I promise you. I'm, I, I, honestly, I'd love you to buy a Transformer, but I'd just love you to be prepared what's coming in a couple of years, okay? 2021, you may think I'm not sending 2022, I don't care. You will be expected to receive 2022 messages camp messages coming the other end. Then in 2025, um, you'll be required to send and receive them. Um, I can't tell you what's happening next year because I don't have 2020 vision. Never works. Those, these are the jokes, folks. But um, apart from that, these are all the formats you're going to have to be migrating to as well, to 2022. They're all moving. Some already fed wires come, come out. We're going to have chips, chaps. Everything's going to be moving there. So you've got to be agile enough to maintain your legacy systems.